Welcome back to the Pulse of the Community, where we head out into the streets to see what's going on. And what is going on right now is Wicked Lit. What am I talking about? Six adaptations of horror literature in full theatrical productions. Yes. Now, this is really, really interesting because you know how I feel about literature. You know how I feel about books. I absolutely love them. And to see some of your favorite horror novels brought to life I've got with me the creators of Wicked Lit, Paul Millay, Jeff Rack, and Jonathan Josephson. Did you make that name up, or was that a birth name? I did my best. Yeah, no. My, my parents love the J's. So. Yeah, that's a, I bet they teased you in school. Jonathan Josephson. Absolutely. You and one say day, that name three times fast. Yeah, and I knew a guy named Joseph Johnson. So we bonded. Oh, I was going to say, it sounds like a bonding experience right there. <laughs> Drove your teachers crazy mm-hmm. when they got to your and name best. on the list, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just didn't want to have them together. In the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Now, Thank this you. big event is happening starting October 21st, running through November 6th. You've got part one and part two. Production A, Production B, Mountain View Mausoleum and Cemetery. Good grief. Where is the Mountain View Mausoleum and Cemetery? Hi. (laughs) Mountain View Mausoleum and Cemetery is located in Altadena. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I mean, I know where Altadena is, but I never knew that. So where exactly? Like, are we in the foothills, at the base of the foothills? It's at the base of the foothills. It's actually located on Marengo Avenue in Mm -hmm. Altadena. Uh, The address is 2300 North Marengo in Altadena, and it's literally at the base of the foothills. Very cool. So at the mausoleum and cemetery, that already sounds spooky enough. You probably could have done Annie at the cemetery <laughs> and still been scary because it's at the cemetery. If you want more information right now, wickedlit.org is the website. 818-242-7910 is the phone number. But guys, tell me all about it. Now, these are horror stories brought to life. Are you guys horror fans? You guys like to scare the you know bejesus out of people when you were little, your sisters and stuff, so you thought, <laughs> why not do it as adults? <laughs> I've always been into horror stories for sure. Uh, my family can attest to that. So yeah, this is like this is a dream come true for me to be able to put up you know stories that I loved in a venue like this. You know, I mean to actually walk through a cemetery and follow the actors as the story progresses. H.P. Uh, Lovecraft is out in the cemetery. We have uh, Edgar Allan Poe's Cask of Amontillado in the mausoleum. So you're actually Ooh. walking through the dead into the catacombs, uh, and uh, then we have. Uh, uh, the uh, chimes, which is actually in the chapel in the mausoleum. Uh, so, you know, it's covered. And that wow. covers production A. That's production A, right. Okay, so now you talk, you talked like I'm moving around. So let's talk about what the experience is like. What happens from the moment I bought my tickets, I've got the family, because I'm assuming I can bring the family, and I've, I'm now at the mausoleum and cemetery for the first performance. How does it happen? Well, and on family, we, we are recommending that it's ages 13 and up. I if was you're a say, very Kenneth, mature 11, 12 year old, yeah. yeah, but there are definitely some moments that are not child friendly. <laughs> um, and it is a walking tour, so you do have to be able to walk a thousand steps. You're going to be walking over the headstones, you're going to be walking up and down stairs. It's, it's definitely a lot of that. Wow. Uh, the experience is, is um, completely controlled from the time you come in, so it's completely safe. You park, you're led from the parking lot to a central area where there's a great setup. You'll be given a curtain speech at the very beginning that will explain everything that you do. From that point, you'll follow a story guide, who's a character in each of the different plays, to a different location at the mausoleum and cemetery. So you'll travel from the central place to the cemetery, to the chapel that Jeff mentioned, to um, the different parts of the mausoleum up and down. And then from there, each play has its own path and you'll follow your story guide through the hallways as it gets darker and darker, as it gets more and more intense, uh, as it gets colder um, and and everything else that we do. So uh, it it really is an all-inclusive experience. All you need to do is show up, be ready to have a good time, be ready to walk. Um, and uh, the plays will happen all around you. Now, are we outside in some of them? So you might want to bring a jacket just in case it's cold or something you can take. So dress in layers. That, that That's very true uh, because some of the plays are completely staged outside. Some start outside and then go inside. So you must be prepared for the weather. Bring a jacket. You know, if it looks like it might rain, bring an umbrella because the show goes on rain or shine. So just be prepared for the elements. Now, am I going to get to sit down at any point or am I standing? You are going to have you are going to get to sit down okay. uh, throughout each of the plays. There is opportunity and 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 and. Uh, uh, parts of the play where the audience is seated and a scene is unfolding around them and then there are other moments where you're standing and a scene unfolds around you and of course you are walking from one location to the other uh, as the show unfolds so there are moments when you are seated there are moments when you're standing there are moments when you're walking oh wow this sounds so 
cool. Now, it sounds like something you want to grab a bunch of friends and come out and make a night of it. Definitely. I mean, uh, it's something like you've never experienced before, I don't think, of, for a Halloween show. It's really, it's a Halloween show for adults that makes you feel like a kid. And you go through the cemetery. I mean, we're wired for sound. That we've got a generator. There's light, sound. It's an immersive experience. I mean, you're you're in these stories. You're not just you know looking from the outside. Right. I mean, you're walking through it with these audiences and, and with the actors. So this is a full blown production. Absolutely, and it's very much theater. It's very much based in storytelling and narrative and characters. But it's also a huge amount of fun for Halloween, and it's it is scary and and spooky. Nothing touches you. Nothing grabs you. It's not not scary fun. <laughs> okay, That's right. not what this is. Nobody's gonna jump off. Behind a tombstone and grab well, a hold of you. Well, I mean, they well no one's going to grab you. No one's going to grab you. We promise no one will grab you. Other right. than that, we're not making any promises at all. Okay. Um, but uh, and and it's it's a, it's a um, it's sophisticated but extremely fun at the same time. And uh, it's a pleasure to spend time with the great authors, with the Edgar Allan Poe's and Charles Dickens and H.P. Lovecraft's in production A uh, and M.R. James, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson and Mark Twain in production B. So it's it's these great stories that that come alive all around you. Wow. Now, who came up with this great idea? Or was it a combination of everybody? Well, Paul came to me first, and then he <laughs> talked to Dr. Jonathan. <laughs> okay. Not that yes. it mattered what the order was, but <laughs> right. Paul was the one that came to me and said, I got this crazy idea, and Paul can take it from there. Yeah, li- literally, it was. It, it seemed to be a crazy idea. Literally um, and literarily. Literarily, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, there goes yeah. Jonathan with those words. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, the, 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 the idea emerged in, in the fall of 2007, and I was uh, um, newly brought on as artistic director of... Of a company that was called the Namdegare Theater Guild, um, and you know the idea was, what do you do with the company? What is the mission of this theater company? What are we going to do? Um, and uh, so the idea of creating an annual event was intriguing, uh, and because it would be an annual event, well, what happens once a year? Well, holidays happen once a year, so that led to the train of thought of, well. What are the holidays that might be interesting? And, uh, of course, there are the standard Christmas carol productions and such around the the holidays in December. Um, But while there's a lot of stuff going on for Halloween, and Halloween's a very social event as far as a Halloween theatrical event, there's nothing out there that happens every year as an annual event. So that was intriguing. So the idea of doing a Halloween theater show... Uh, every year, um, you know, piqued my interest, and then uh, I I mentioned it to Jeff. He and I have worked together for a number of years, and and Jeff thought the crazy idea wasn't so crazy, <laughs> uh, and actually thought it would be kind of fun and interesting. And then uh, uh, Jonathan and I had been working on a project the same that same year, and uh, I mentioned it to him, and and he got excited about it. So that's that's how it started, and and the three of us got together in my living room in January of 2008, and started to you know ask the questions. Well, what is this going to be? And that's how it started. Wow. Okay, so let's talk tickets. Wickedlit.org is the website where you can see all of the information about Wicked Lit. 818-242-7910. You can call if you don't have access to a computer right now and you want the information right this second. But we can go there and get tickets, right? At wickedlit.org. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. And, and please do. Yeah, and please do. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm going to grab some friends and come for sure. This sounds like a rousing good time. It really does. Like it sounds like it'd be so much fun. It definitely is, and um, we have gained a little bit of a reputation. So going quickly is definitely important, just to make sure that you get the date that you want, the production that you want. If you saw the show last year, that's production A. You can see production B. It's something totally new. Or if you saw production, if you saw the show last year, see production A again. Um, there are some changes that uh, will be fun for people who repeat. Now, what's the difference between production A and production B? Are they at different times, different days? How does that work? How do I know which one I want to come to? Well, in terms of the schedule, the easiest thing to do would just be go to the website, and it's very clear on the homepage production. A, production B, you can click on the buy tickets links under those titles mm-hmm. and you'll see when the performances actually happen. Um, production A opens first, and those are the three plays that Jeff mentioned The Chimes, uh, adapted from Charles Dickens, uh, Cask of Amontillado by Poe, and The Unnameable. The Unnameable. By, adapted and directed by Jeff Durek. So those three plays happen every time production A happens. Production B is three totally separate stories. Um, that's M.R. James casting the runes, Mark Twain's A Ghost Story, and Robert Louis Stevenson's The Body Snatcher. When uh, Once production B is open, actually both productions are running concurrently. So all six of those short plays are going to be happening at the same time all throughout the Mausoleum and Cemetery, with some exceptions in terms of scheduling. But for the most part, when you show up, you need to stay in your group, follow your story guide, listen to the curtain speech, because there's going to be a lot of activity. And Mountain View Mausoleum and Cemetery will have six 
short plays going on all around you. So you might you might hear the baying of a beast from a, a play that you're not watching, or you might see somebody running past, running away from something, and you don't know what's going on. Just little things that you'll see um, as just part of the complete experience of Wicked Lit. Wow. So is this a, uh, it runs every night during the, from the 21st to the 6th? Or there's some nights that there's no place. It's away. pretty consistent. There are a couple of dark nights, so just check the website for all of those details. And again, there, we that, do have shows on Halloween for both production A and production B, which is a Monday. Uh-huh. So that's a, that's not a typical theater day, but that's something that we want to. If if you're looking for something to do on Halloween, it doesn't get much better than Wicked Lit. Yeah, spooky good time. <laughs> 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 okay, well you know this sounds so incredible. Wicked Lit. It's happening at the Mountain View Mausoleum and Cemetery there in Altadena, and the address again. The address is 2300 North Marengo Avenue in Altadena. And it's definitely kind of a, a little more, I would say it's a PG-13 experience. Yeah, that's you know, fair. And it's not that there's anything um, lewd going on. It's the fact that it's kind of scary. Definitely. And that's why you wouldn't want to bring any young kids because it's kind of scary. Sure. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not that, uh, it, there's nothing like, there's not a lot of gore. Yeah. There is a little bit of blood, but it's not like uh, it, it's not like um, some of the Universal Studios or the right. Uh, you know the the, the scary the stuff. Yeah, with yeah. the scary yeah. stuff. I mean, you don't don't bring a four year old who's going to yeah, then have don't. nightmares for the next week. You know, right. mommy, mm-hmm. the man's coming after it'll, me. It'll be bad. I mean, we <laughs> we did um, a staged reading just to play a script in hand, and there were some young kids, eight, nine, just the scripts, no props, no lights, no everything, and there was a little much for them. So for the full show, when you're in a cemetery and there's things happening and our characters are being right. chased by something scary. Uh, yeah, PG-13 is fair. Oh, good. I can't wait. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm going to bring my son, my daughter. We're going to yes. come get some other friends and just make this a fun night out. This sounds so amazing. And I'm sure there's great restaurants and stuff out Altadena Way. Have some dinner and then come on to the plate. Now, I would imagine it starts like once it's dark. Yeah. Curtain time for every performance is 8 o'clock. Okay. And we're going to start right on time. Um, so plan ahead. Um, it's it's one of those things that you want to look at MapQuest, look at, look at Google Maps. Mm-hmm. Be on time because we're going to start right at 8. Right. Don't show up at 8.30 trying to figure out how you missed the first half right. or where, where they are in the cemetery. <laughs> right, right, right. Because yeah. then you really will be Because you're on your own. <laughs> right. We, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wickedlit.org. It is so amazing. Six adaptations of horror literature in a theatrical production. And that theatrical production happens at the Mountain View Mausoleum and Cemetery starting October 21st, running through November 6th. All the information is at wickedlit.org. Or you can call 818-242-7910. Paul, Jeff, Jonathan, I will see you in the cemetery. All right, can't awesome. wait to see Thanks you there. So good. And Fantastic. Things. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along with the pulse of the community, they're back. Tacos for Tatas. Yes, it's Taco Nazo and the team out there getting ready for the Walk for Hope. It's from the City of Hope, the Women's Cancer Cures. It's the Walk for Hope. It's all happening on Sunday, November 6th www.walkforhope.org It's a 5K, it's a leisure walk We were out there last year and had so much fun Except I took it a little serious Because I was like, okay, it's a 5K, let's go And everybody else was just like lagging along, talking And I'm like, what are these people doing? This is a race So I was the, one of the you know really excited people that wanted to race And there's a lot of people that just come in to walk and have a lot of fun But with us, of course, the head of the Tacos for Tata's team, Thelma. Good morning. How's Taco Naso? Taco is doing great. Thank you so much for having me here again today. Oh, well, happy Hispanic Heritage Month as well. Oh, thank you. You yes. know, we do a lot of celebrating, and we've had you on before and profiled you and Taco Naso, which are, of course, the world-famous fish tacos. Yes, it is. The world's best fish tacos since 1978. Now let's talk about a website right now for Taco Naso. TacoNaso.com. TacoNaso.com. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that link will be up on my webpage at Hot923.com, keyword Josefa. But right now, you know what? I'm looking at this whole package for the Walk for Hope. It's happening on the November 6th, and I'm encouraging you to please come join the Taco Nazo team and come on out and have a lot of fun with us. And tell me a little bit, Thelma, about why you got involved with City of Hope. You know, I got involved with City of Hope uh, a couple years ago because um, my daughter is the one that actually had told me, you know, mom, we should do a walk. And at that time, I really didn't know too much about walks and about, you know, raising money for, for women's cancers. But once I went, it'll change your life. You go and you see the great people. You see patients walking. You see uh, 
um, the patient from upstairs in the hospital waving down at you at the walks. It's just something that we can do. Right now we're healthy. Thank God we are healthy. And, um, you know, maybe someday if we need the help, it'll be there for us. You know, I got to tell you a little story if I can. Um, my daughter's uh, best friend's mom, Maria Ordones, uh, passed away from stomach cancer just mm-hmm. October 8th. And um, last year when we were doing this walk, she didn't even know she was sick. She didn't even wow. know she was sick. I, I, I got to tell you, it was it's really been scary. Um, last year, uh, we promoted the walk. She, you know, we found out late last year that she was sick. She passed away October 8th. She had the biggest smile. She could light up any room. A great positive attitude. So, I mean, if anything else, I want to encourage people out there to help us. Help us find a cure for, for this this horrible disease. It's ugly. It's it's no joke. It is ugly. And, you know, through fun, through having a good time getting together, the Taquana. So catering truck's going to be out there for the city. Of oh, Hawaii. good. So, I mean, you know, we, we're doing our best to try to get people out there. And we're trying to encourage people to join our team. And we're telling everybody everybody if you could just raise a hundred dollars that's 10 people asking them for ten dollars i think everybody can really do that for the great cause that it is and we would be that much closer to our goal so i'm encourage everybody please come out there uh you know we never know when it can touch closer to home right exactly. and it's a scary disease and they the city of hope treats all kinds of women's disease not just breast cancer but you know i really do encourage everybody to come out and, and walk with us and have fun and at the same time do something wonderful You're right because you never know when it's going to happen i mean I mean, look how fast. I mean, one day I was walking around. The next day I had a brain tumor and I was in emergency right. surgery. You know, thank God it was um, benign, yes. the tumor. But um, other people aren't as fortunate. Right. And, um, you know, I would, don't know what I would have done without the support and help of everybody who was there rallying for me. And so I encourage you. Now, how do we get on the Tacos for Tata's team? All you have to do is go to walkforhope.org. Look for our team. You can go under taco and then space naso, Tacos for Tata's. And that's when you find our team. It's so easy. All you do is click join the team. And it's a $25 registration fee up to October 30th. After October 30th, it'll be $40 to register. You get a, a City of Hope t-shirt. And Taconazo will also give you a Taconazo team t-shirt. It'll be a lot of fun. Please come out and join us. Yes, it's going to be so much fun. Tacos for Tatas. If you live out by City of Hope or this happens to be your passion, come on and join the Tacos for Tatas team. You know it's going to be a lot of fun because if the taco truck's going to be there, that means after we get done walking, we can indulge in those world-famous tacos. Yes. Because yes, yes. we have already will have walked off like four or five, 600 calories. So, of course, yes, yes. we can have tacos when we're done. <laughs> you have to replenish with tacos. <laughs> exactly. So, again, the website is walk, the number four, hope.org. Look for the Tacos for Tatas team, click join, and you know what? They've got these absolutely incredible little hair, purple hair extensions that are so cute. I'm going to make sure there's one in my hair, and I'll have some other ones out there. They're called Streaks of Hope. You wear this streak as a symbol of your commitment to help build awareness for the movement to fight women's cancers. Walkforhope.org. Come on out and join the Tacos for Tatas team. Now, I have to do another walk in the morning for brain tumors, but I'm coming out here afterwards to have have some fun and I will see you out there on the 6th of November and Thelma thank you so much for being a leader in all this and leading the Taco Nazo Tacos for Tata's team well thank you so much Josefa you are wonderful for having me here again this year and I encourage everybody out there if you don't you can't join our team please at least donate your ten dollars how much are we trying to raise this year Fifteen thousand dollars. And where are we at? We're not quite there, but we were closer if everybody's helped. Okay, come on, team. I need everybody to get out. Come on, ten dollars. You spend that at two trips to Starbucks. Spend that ten dollars to help some cancer research for women for City of Hope. Sunday, November 6th is the walk, walkforhope.org. It's a 5K walk. It's a leisure walk. Some people are serious like me. Some people are just, you know, laughing and talking and walking slow, having a good time. No matter what you do, come on out there. Let's have some fun. The whole team will meet in front of the Taco Nazo truck. That's where you'll get your T-shirt and walk with the Taco Nazo team. Thelma, now you know I have to go out to do the brain tumor walk early in the morning, but after I'm done with that, I will definitely head over to the City of Hope, and I will see you there.
Thank you so much, Josefa, and I'll see everybody there. All of this information, of course, will be up on my webpage at hot923.com, keyword Josefa. If you're ready for a walk at the beach, come out and join us. Come out and join me for the brain tumor walk. If you're ready for a walk at the City of Hope, then I will see you out there later in the afternoon after you get done walking. No matter what you do, get out, have some fun, get some exercise, and it's all for wonderful, wonderful causes. Everything you heard today will be up on my webpage at hot923.com, keyword Josefa. I'm Josefa Salinas. Until we get together again, stay strong, stay focused, and most of all, stay informed. I'll see you next Sunday on the Community Review, Hot 92.3. Have a terrific day. Enjoy your family. Most of all, be good to yourself.